Hello, hello, hello. How is everybody doing tonight? This is kind of a spur of the moment thing, but I wanted to bring you guys in. I got a large commission to do a tile backsplash. So that is what I'm doing tonight, but I'm not gonna be doing the same colors. I'm gonna be mixing it up and doing, you know, a variety of different colors for you guys. I always get a lot of questions about how I keep the tiles stuck to my Lazy Susan. And it's just some loop of painter's tape right here. Uh, I drew some circles just so it's easier for me to center the tile on the Lazy Susan. Kind of just makes my life a little tiny bit easier. And that's what we have right there. Now, it's been a long time since I've done a live stream. And I want to just say welcome to everybody. And if you're here for the replay, I'm very grateful for you being a part of this channel and supporting my content, it totally means the world to me. And I, I can't tell you guys how much I appreciate you guys. Let's see. It's not showing me chat for some reason. Oh, hold on. No, I mean, I guess. Yeah. Oh, there it is. Hey, Joyce. How you doing? Hey, Kim. How's it going? Um, so if you might have missed it, I'm doing a kitchen backsplash. So I have tons of tiles to do anyway. I'm just going to show you kind of some of the colors I'll be using tonight. This is that, this little piggy's Grenache red. I love red, but y'all know that if you've been watching any of my videos. Red's my thing. But we got all kinds of other colors too. So we got fluorescent red, fluorescent pink, doxazine purple. This is a kind of a burgundy color. It's really cool. We got this champagne colored mica. Hey Rory. Hey Jack, Jack, Jack. How's it going? But this is like a, it's almost like a wine color. It's really great. Love it. Uh, we got a mica blue. We also have this really interesting kind of color shift, pearlescent. Hi, Charlene, how you doing? Kelly, what's going on? <laughs> this is crazy. I wanna say thank you guys since you're here now. I wanna say thank you guys so much for like supporting the content and coming out and checking things out. But without further ado, I'm not gonna waste your time. I know your time's precious just like everybody else's. Hey, L hey, DL Tyler, how you going? How's it going? <clears throat> but we're going to get right into this. So uh, if you might have missed it, some people ask me how I affix these tiles to my Lazy Susan without them flying off. It's just a piece of painter's tape. Hey, Carla, how's it going? Piece of painter's tape. I also tape off the back of the coaster. Yeah, I know, right? That purple and red. So I did a couple test coasters. I always do tests, you know, for science. Let me show you what that came out like. So we have that one. So this is using that that purple kind of blue. And this was just a test earlier. Hey, Col Terra Color Art. Yeah, these are just regular tiles that I would get from Lowe's, uh, Jeanette. Just plain old four by four ceramic tiles. So, and uh, I just use a Oh, well, that's awesome, Sarah. Welcome. But I found that this way, me doing a live stream in this manner is much more conducive to interacting with you guys more. Yeah, I do. I resonate after Kim. But this, this helps me interact with you guys on a different level than, than I normally would. And I appreciate it a lot better because I get to actually talk to you guys and answer your questions. Because a lot of people have questions. And that's perfectly fine. There's nothing wrong with having questions. I still have questions from time to time. So there's no such thing as a dumb question. Everybody's questions, are, they matter. All right, so I'm gonna use that dark mica blue. That's very true, DL Tyler. I bet you I could get some of that uh, double-sided foam tape. So we got that dark mica blue and then some teal. 
think I might just put like a small spot. Is this your PM with Minwax? No, this is my, if you look in the description of this live stream, there's a, I tried to fill it out as much as possible. Uh, this one is my bloom pour recipe. So yeah, Kelly Mank, that's absolutely true. Uh, I talk to you guys even when I'm recording the video. Rory, yeah, this is my uh, cell activator out of that same video for my blooms, yes. Kelly, or Kelsey Townsend, thank you so much. How you doing? All right, so this is my cell activator. So I'll just put it a little bit in the center. And then what I wanna do is try to blow that cell activator over the top of the other colors. It doesn't always work in my favor, but I do try. So I'm probably gonna get my big fat head in the way for a second. You resin yours and the edges look strange. That does happen from time to time sometimes because the oil from your fingers will cause the resin to reject too. So that's something you might wanna think about. I always try to wear gloves when I use resin. So now we're just gonna let it sit in there. What video do I share my recipes? In the des description of this video, Kelly, there's a, a recipe guide for this exact thing I'm doing right now for blooms. And then if I have a whole playlist on how to get started with acrylic pouring, that also has uh, a bunch of techniques, glue recipe, flow tool recipe, stuff like that. As well as that, um, there is also in the description, there are links to the acrylic pouring, like my little free ebook that I made just to try to help people out. And then there's also a link in there to um, my recipe ebook and they're both free. And some of you that have been around for a while might notice that I have a join button now. And I've been rolling around the idea of, of doing a channel membership for a while. And my main purpose behind doing the channel membership is with Patreon, I'm having a really difficult time managing that. And that's that's on my end. But with YouTube having it, I can do member-only live streams, member-only chats, and stuff like that where uh, channel members can get much more of a benefit talking to me one-on-one. -on -one. So if that's something you're into, that very first link in the description is for uh, channel members. So here's that very first bloom we just did. I'm trying to get the light so you can see kind of some of the magenta and texture in there. Thank you. Thank you, Kelly. I appreciate that. So I'm going to walk over to the other side of the table and set these down. So there's going to be a little bit of time between my blooms. But before I come back, I just want to ask you guys, if you have questions, feel free to ask them. I'm not gonna like give you any kind of bad information. If I don't know the answer, I'll tell you. But if I do know the answer, I'm gonna definitely try to share it with you because I mean, everybody wants to be able to do this kind of stuff well, if you enjoy it. Aw, uh, Dina, thank you. Thank you, Kim. It's definitely not easy though. If you, did you see my last video, Dina, Dina Camacho? My last video, those tiles made me struggle. Batman is on my, my spinner, yeah, I know, right? But I seriously struggled with my last set of uh, blooms. So I'm trying really hard to get these done and out of the way. Okay, if you get a chance, Deanna, uh, give that video a check. Because it, it's a longer video, it's about 20 minutes. And it's got a lot of stuff that was cut out, but everything in that video went, well, all those, everything in those blooms went wrong for me. Am I being too loud? He's peeking at the top. Am I being too loud, you guys? I don't know. Just let me know in the chat. Oh, okay. But, uh, yeah, in that video, everything that I was trying to do, it all went wrong. So I, I actually debated even putting that out. Oh, Kim, thank you so much. That is so awesome. 
but yeah, everything went wrong and it's a process. But thank you so much, Kim. That like the support for the channel is supremely appreciated. I can't I can't overstate that at all. But this process is it's difficult. And I mean, me myself personally, I have done so many I forgot gold. Look at there. I made a rookie mistake again. It's okay. But I've done so many of these blooms and I still struggle, so I understand the the issue and you know how difficult it can be. In, in any way that I can help you, I would love to be able to do that. So when you blow, you try to blow the cell activator over the other colors. I don't always succeed, as you see right there. Um, but when you start seeing those cells open up, you stop blowing. Because if you blow any more than that, you'll see I messed up. And you can see the base coat underneath. You, In an ideal world, you're not supposed to see that. Thank you, Jan. I appreciate that. All right, so now after you blow it out, you want to give it a, you know, a moment or two. And it gives me a perfect opportunity to kind of talk to you guys in chat while we're waiting on those, on the cell activator to sink and those cells to start forming. So where in the world is everybody from? Oh, Deanna asked, do you have to prepare these tiles? Uh, the only way that I prepare them is by putting tape on the, on the back. So we got Pennsylvania, Montana, Massachusetts, Michigan. My mother's from Michigan. Uh, Melbourne. Whoa. <laughs> uh, I'm from North Carolina. So right now, West Virginia, Southern, Southeast Texas. So all over the world. That's awesome. Florida, yeah, I'm originally from Florida, Kelsey. Palm Coast, Florida, heck yeah, go get it. All right, let me move this one. So I didn't put gold in the center of this one, so, but you can still see that blue kind of peeking through a little bit. And at the end of this, I'll show you some of the other ones that I've been working on. Um, but I'm just trying to, you know, have fun with it. Just try to enjoy the process. If you stress yourself out, like, okay, let's say you're, you're trying to do blooms, and I know a lot of people have issues with it, because I still, to this day, have issues with it. But if you let it get to the point that it frustrates you, you're going to start to kind of forget why you love this process to begin with. And then you might, I mean, you might, it might cause you to, like, quit. And for me, this is, like, a very therapeutic thing. So if I wouldn't be able to quit doing this. And that's why I try to be positive and I try to, you know, take it one day at a time. You Sometimes you're going to make mistakes and that's okay. Just learn from them. Try to figure out what went wrong and experiment. How you doing, Julie? Amy Duckworth. What is Cell Activator? If uh, Okay, so there's a video in my description. It's my Bloom Recipe Guide video and it explains everything. But essentially the Cell Activator is the the color that I put on the top layer and blow over that creates the cells that you're seeing right now. So the white is just plain old house paint. It's uh, This particular brand is Glidden uh, Satin Interior, but any satin house paint will work. I hear you, Rory. I get there sometimes too, and it's super frustrating when you know, you have that idea in your head and you're trying to get it to come out on the canvas and, you know, everything that you, you're trying kind of isn't cooperating. And I totally get that. I understand that. So, but just, if you need to, take a break. If it's a specific technique that's giving you an issue, then, um, if it's a specific technique giving you an issue, then switch to another technique for a while. Oh, hold on, let me try to see if I can move. After you tape, lightly wipe the alcohol. Always wear gloves, keep your oil off your hands and off the tiles. Yeah, that's very true. Yeah, actually, uh, DL Tyler, the, the cell activator can be any opaque Amsterdam color. Now, I don't know why it's, it has to be an Amsterdam color, 
I've done some experiments with other brands and it none of them work quite as well as the Amsterdam paint. So Amsterdam has like a uh, emerald green is opaque, has kind of like a baby blue. So there's several opaque colors from Amsterdam that work as cell activator. I use them fre quite frequently. Uh, Kelsey Townsend asked, what inspired you to start doing this kind of art? And if I'm completely honest, my inspiration for this, like my jump off point to start this art was depression, which it's kind of sad, but it's very true. And I'm not gonna lie to you guys. Um, let me blow this one out real quick. Oh, that one's better, yeah. Ooh. All right, so we'll let those cells settle while I kind of answer that. Um, yeah, so what got me started with the growth pouring was, was I was in a really bad depression after being in the military for, at that point, it was about 15 years. Um, a lot of negative stuff happened to me in my life and, and I was, I was lost. And I just happened to stumble onto YouTube and found a video from Julie Cuts. She just happened to be the first creator I ever saw. And I, you know, I rushed out and tried to buy everything I thought I needed and you know I wasted a bunch of money getting a bunch of stuff I didn't actually need but I poured my first painting and it was absolutely terrible <laughs> it was it was terrible but I loved I loved that form of expression the chaos in it and just like I don't know it, it just clicked with me I fell in love with it and I have been doing it ever since I I, I won't stop Mm, thank you, Sarah Clark. So we're going to spin this bad boy out. Thank you, Kim. I appreciate that. Hi, Tammy Owen. If I miss questions, I apologize to you guys. Um, but, it, I mean, if I don't answer a question, it's not that I'm ignoring it. It's just I just didn't see it because I'm either looking down at the tile or I'm looking, you know, at these colors trying to find out what my next composition is going to be. Or my color combination is going to be. But I am going to start doing member uh, member only live streams for sure. And I'm going to do it once a month. And I'm sure it, at first it's going to be a, a small audience. And it might be a small audience for the entire time. And that's fine. But the whole focus of it is, I think it's $4.99 a month. Oh, thank you, Jamie. Jamie? Is it Jamie or Jamie? No, it's, it's Jamie. What am I? Retarded? Yes, I am. Hey, Miss Toxic Avenger. Um, so yeah, it's uh, it's four ninety nine. I'll be doing member only live streams, and you'll be able to talk to me one on one. Yeah, this I have definitely seen the light at the end of the tunnel, and this this art form kind of just yanked me right out of that depression. So, and that's part of the reason that all my videos I'm very positive and upbeat. I mean, I have bad days just like everybody else, but I want to be positive and I want to try to like spread that to people because I never know if somebody's watching my videos for the first time and they're in the same place that I was. Oh, okay. Hi Jane, how you doing? Hi from the UK. Well, hello back from North Carolina. All right, so let's switch up the colors a little bit. So I'm going to do, let's see, I don't know how this is going to work, but let's see, hot pink. Yeah, let's do a hot pink. I mixed up a whole bunch of colors because sometimes I'm, I'm kind of random and I just put whatever's there. Yeah, if I do miss your question, please ask it again. It, this right here is my phone. <laughs> So I don't have any kind of crazy setup. This is my phone and I've got gloves on. So it's really hard for me to scroll through it and get back to your question if I happen to miss it. But I'm, I'm being diligent and I'm trying to keep track of what's going on in the chat. So then we got this really cool like pearlescent, but it's got like a purple shimmer to it. It dries quite clear. It's almost like a glaze. Hold on, let me get a little bit more on there. It's almost like a glaze, but it's freaking gorgeous. And then, let's see, what color do I want to add to that? You know what? We'll have, no, that's too dark. 
Uh, let's do teal again. You still can't get your consistency down? And consistency is one of the most important things, but I'm not gonna forget this. Uh, I'm not gonna forget that, and as soon as I blow this out, I'm gonna show you an easy way so you can check the consistency of your paints against the paints that people are using on their videos. I have a cleaning process video on my, uh, on my channel as well. It's in that same acrylic pouring for beginners playlist. And it shows you exactly how I go about cleaning my paintings before I resin them, or if I'm gonna varnish them to remove any silicone, yes. But I'm definitely gonna get to that. Hold on one second. Oh, that's kind of a wicked trippy color combination. Okay, so while we let these colors settle, I'm gonna show you the way that I do it too. So I do what's called a trace, and I learned trace from Tish from the Artist Haven, so I'm gonna give credit where it's due. But a lot of people, they do their mixing on camera, right? So trace is when you see it dripping off the stick, see how it leaves a mound there? Well, you count how many seconds till that mound disappears. So this is probably a trace of three. So. One, two, three, yep, and that mound disappeared. And that's how I kind of go off of other people's videos because a lot of people, they're not gonna, there's a lot of things that affect consistency. It could be humidity, temperature, all kinds of stuff. So that is how I find out other people's consistencies, even if they're using a slightly different recipe than I am. But that way, it always helps me to do that. Hey, Novella. Jane says, uh, had a go at my first fluid art yesterday. What a mess I made, but I had so much fun. That's great. <laughs> that is awesome. Yeah, absolutely, Jamie. It, it helps me a lot, and I do use that quite frequently to figure out how, how other people are mixing their stuff. All right. That looks wicked as heck. Dang. I like that one a lot. And it's like a super bright pink. And like if I hold it in the light, you probably see over here in the lines, right? You can see that purple kind of uh, metallic in there. That's very understandable. I've had trouble with depression myself and I have anxiety while I'm stressed. Yeah, drawing and painting. I mean, I would suggest finding any creative outlet that you can because to be honest, like I have zero artistic ability. I mean, I know I have this channel and you guys love the stuff that I make, but to me, I have no artistic ability. Like if you give me a paintbrush and try to get me to paint a landscape, that's gonna be a hot mess. <laughs> it's gonna be such a hot mess, but you know, that's the beauty of this art form too. It's very abstract, it's very chaotic, but there's some order in that chaos. And the control you have is the colors you choose, the, the mediums you use, and the technique you go with. So that is why I love this art form so much. Because like I can just come out here, get into my zen space, and take you guys along with me for the ride. And we just all kind of grow and learn together. And that's, that's the joy of it for me, anyway. I know, I mean... Miss Toxic Avenger, I know that like you're going to say I do have artistic ability, but I know how to mix paints. I know that. I can mix some paints, and I can learn from other people. Yeah, the, that pink is wild, isn't it? But if you're starting your journey, and you're very new to acrylic pouring, there's a link in the description for two free downloadable ebooks. One of them is an acrylic pouring guide and one of them is a recipe guide. So the recipes go over like glue, a glue pouring medium, a flow draw pouring medium, a water pouring medium, and the bloom that you're watching here, the pouring medium for that. Don't art is more than a paintbrush, honey. You are a talented painter. True art is making people feel loved. Well, if I'm making everybody feel loved, then my mission's accomplished. What was the name of that stuff you used to create cells? You talking about this black color up here? If you're talking about this black, that is the cell activator. And 
it's actually one of the most complicated parts of the recipe. There's glue, American Floetrol. Uh, there's several other ingredients, but I would suggest go into that video in the description for my Bloom Pour recipe guide and look in there. You never been on a live before, Kim? That's awesome. Well, welcome. I'm glad. Hey, Sylvia from the Netherlands. What? That's awesome. All right, let me blow this one out for you guys. Okay, so I did see the question, do I mix my paints fresh every time? And no, I don't. I don't always mix my paints, but um, if I'm gonna mix them and I have some excess left over, I'll put them in an airtight container. These have been stored for weeks and they're still good. You can store them in that or little bottles, but as long as it's airtight, it'll be fine. You wouldn't join Shelly Art because you wouldn't want to be able to... Oh, there's no secrets anymore, Miss Toxic Avenger? Yeah. I mean, and that was true back then, though, because, I mean, that's something that Shelly Carruthers came up with. Like, this whole art form is, like, I, I'm pretty sure she pioneered it. And I wouldn't want to take that course because I knew that I was going to get a benefit out of it and learn more than, you know, the average person. And I, then I would feel obligated to share those secrets with you guys. So, in, in a sense, trying to be true to myself, I like to learn things through experimentation and mistakes. And so... I try to teach you guys as much as I know. Oh, hey, Kathy. Kim Adams asks, what's the best way to let other people know about your channel? The best way to let other people know about your channel is just be consistent. Okay, I think the best way for me to, to answer that question is to kind of tell my story and how it kind of evolved on YouTube, and I won't make it take forever, okay? Um... Hold on, I'm walking this over to my drying area. I'm coming right back. All right, I'm here. So the main reason I even started recording my art videos at all was so that I could um, remember color combinations. So, because certain things work, certain things don't. So I started recording my videos. And when I first started, they were just on a hard drive somewhere. And then I started uploading them to YouTube because a friend of mine said I should try it. So I did. And it was very slow in the beginning. And it, it's going to be. It's going to be very slow growth. I, I think it took me nine months to get my first thousand subscribers. And it's, it's a marathon. And you, you'll hear a lot of YouTube growth people on YouTube talking about how it's a marathon, not a sprint. But that's so hard because we all want the results right now, but you mean my JMO channel? Oh, how do I let people know about my channel? I actually don't do any real advertising. Post in the Facebook groups anymore. Right now I just, I kinda, I put out a video and if people like it, they like it. If they don't, they don't. And it's things that I'm pretty much going to be doing anyway. No, that's why, I, yeah, I mean, nine months to hit a thousand is not bad. I know, I know that I'm, I'm very fortunate that one of my videos did get picked up and pushed out to a bunch of people. And that's another thing that helped me grow was just the biggest thing is if you're going to start a YouTube channel or you're going to try to turn your passion into a business, you got to love what you're doing. Can you, yeah, Kim, you can absolutely tell whoever you want about me. The more the merrier. Oh shoot, I blowed that really hard. Whoops. So you don't want to blow so hard that it starts slinging the paint everywhere, but. And you see how I blew until those cells started to form and I stopped? That's pretty much how you want to do it. Yeah, you could share a video. Oh, hey, Dirty Artist, how you doing? Yeah, if you want to share videos out, that's perfectly fine. I mean, especially if it's helpful to them. Like, if somebody else is struggling with acrylic pouring and you think that maybe 
my content could help them learn it a little bit better, a little bit easier, and make it a little bit, uh, you know, less painful and frustrating, then yeah, absolutely. I mean, there are times where I share other people's channels because people ask me questions that I don't know the answers to. So instead of just pulling out an answer and, you know, trying to fake it, I'll tell them straight off the bat. Like, I don't know the answer to the question, but this creator does those exact things really well, so you should talk to them. I'm not too proud to, to let people know that I don't know what certain things are. Like pearl pores. I, I don't know anything about pearl pores. Hey, Art by Kirkston, how you doing? <laughs> if you guys want to share, share. But I'm not going to ask you guys to share. You know what I mean? But if it's something that you want to do, feel free. Aw, thank you so much. You can't get Floetrol in the UK, Jane? Tried using glue and water pouring medium. Is that why I made a mess? How would the glue medium work for the bloom? There actually is a little bit of glue in the cell activator. I'm not sure how it would work in a bloom. Um, I'm actually not sure. I've never tried it. So I don't want to lie to you. Kind of like what I was just saying. If I haven't done something or I don't know, I won't, I won't, you know, fluff it up for you and try to give you fake information. I, I've never done it with glue. Um, but you're in Australia, you said? In Australia, you have the Australian version of Floetrol. Yeah, it's Oatrol. That's 100 times better than American Floetrol. Just use that in paint. That's all you need. Uh, with the Australian version of the Floetrol, the Oatrol, use three parts of that to one part Amsterdam paint. And that's all you need for the cell activator. Oh, shoot, I missed... I... I did it again, y'all. That's fine. You know what? I forgot the pearl color. Yeah. I was going to go out and buy a bunch of that Australian Floetrol, but I don't know. I kind of like the way my American stuff's working with the mix that I use, so I just kind of stick with it. Oh, is it in the UK? What is that stuff called from, from Australia? Oh, you're absolutely welcome, Chris. I'm glad that you're having success. That's what we're here for. All right, that one's good. So while we let these cells settle, I got I did get the question if I do these on canvas. So let me take these gloves off and bring over a couple canvases that I have done. But yeah, I, I absolutely do do them on canvas. So I'm going to try to hold these up to the camera so you can see them. But here's just a, like, this is a, a 12 by 12 canvas. It's already been varnished. It's already up on my Shopify store, ready to be sold. So that's that one. And then I did a red, white, and blue one, I think, a couple months back. And this one's also varnished. It's done. It's ready. This is a, one of them gallery wrap canvases that are, you know, very large. But yeah, this was the kind of patriotic looking one I tried to do a couple months back. But you can paint on anything. Can I use any mica powder? I think you, I mean, yeah, you should absolutely be able to use any mica powder. Um, I've used Arteza mica powder. I've used this little piggy's mica powder. I've used um, a couple other different mica powders too. Some. Uh, some no-name brands that I've gotten off Amazon before, and they all work well. Um, I have a video also. It's not in the description, but it should be in my Acrylic Pouring Beginners playlist on my channel, where it, it'll walk you through mixing uh, micas. Because mica powder can be dangerous, so if you're going to mix it, try to uh, use a respirator, but also just if you want to take a short bit of your time, five minutes, check out that video because I go through how I mix it and what I use and safety precautions that I use. 
And DL Tyler asks, how long do you let your tiles dry before sealing them? Okay, so before I seal the tiles, I'll give them a good seven to nine days. I know it's kind of a weird, arbitrary sounding number, but seven to nine days based on the humidity here in North Carolina lets them dry to the point where I can seal them. And then after I seal them, I give them another week so the, the, the seal can dry. And then I can resin them and feel comfortable. Yeah, Australian flow trial is awesome. Well, I'm glad that this helped you, Mrs. Frosch. Is it Frosch? Fraulein, I know that's Mrs. After my small state in, or small stay over there in Germany, or not Germany, but Italy. What is the white paint? Is it house paint? Yeah, I actually have a mostly empty can and I'll be able to show you. So this is the, the house paint that I'm using, right? It's probably better you see the top. It's just glidden satin interior house paint. Um, but that's it. But any satin will work. Thank you, B-Man, I appreciate that. Um, but any, any satin interior house paint will work for the pillow. Because as you see, the pillow gets wasted. All this is excess pillow just spun. Oh, okay, awesome. You're already ahead of the game then, Mrs. Kirkston. If I butcher your names, guys, I'm sorry. I'm trying to read and be aware of what's going on <laughs> at the same time. Woo! All right. Well, let's see. What colors do we want to use now? I'll tell you what. This dioxazine purple is gorgeous. So we'll use a little bit of dioxazine purple. I might have to switch to my white cell activator if I'm going to use dark colors, though. <coughs> Excuse me. They come in twos normally, so there might be another one coming. <clears throat> you can use acrylic, or Charlene asks, do you, what does the house paint do and can you use acrylic paint instead? I use the house paint just because it's cheap and inexpensive and I waste so much of it. You can use acrylic paint, yes you can. You definitely can. All right, so dioxazine purple, then we got this beautiful champagne looking color. Just gorgeous. What do I seal the tiles with? I seal the tiles with, here, let me blow out this bloom and I will answer that question. But I wanna put this white cell activator on there and blow it out real quick. Cause I'll just grab the can and show you what I use. Cause it's an aerosol. I either use the aerosol or I use uh, gloss, not gloss, I use uh, some gel and I'll show you both. Let me go grab that stuff. Why is the Bear paint better? The Bear 8300 is available. Now in the video that I made, uh, I was using Sherwin Williams Ultra Deep Base and they discontinued that. So it's no longer available. So an, a viable alternative is to use the uh, Bear 8300. I'm grabbing the, the things that I used to seal my paintings right now for you guys. So you get a good idea of what I use. All right, so they're two different things. And I'll show you both because I'm here. So I'll use this to seal my paintings. This isn't my varnish, but I'll use this to seal them or to seal the tiles before I resin them. And then the other way, if you're having a lot of problems with some silicone or oils that you can't get them all off, uh, I mix this at three parts water, one part this, and I brush it over the surface and let it dry. And then it acts as like a barrier coat between the silicone and the resin or the varnish, and it doesn't allow it to reject, if that makes sense. So those are the two ways that I kind of seal my paintings or my coasters before I, I get to uh, resin or varnish. Hey, Garrett Brown Art Studio, what is going on, man? Welcome to the live stream. Okay, 
This one came out way more wicked than I thought it would. Yeah, and it's not even my idea, Kim. I got the idea, I, that idea from Olga Sobi. Because she put out a video a few months back about it, and she uses that as a barrier coat. So I've adopted it, but I'll never try to say that it's my idea. All right, let's see. Look at this thing. That's champagne color with the doxazine purple. Woo! Yeah, she is amazing, isn't she? Oh, you use the isolation coat by Golden and it works great? Heck yeah, there's another option that I could use. Thank you. See, I learned just as much from you guys as you all learned from me. How about that? All right. Cell activation is adding a little flow to it, yes or no? Uh, cell activator is, is either this black or that white that I'm adding on top of the colors and blowing it over. In that video in my description, it tells you all about cell activator and the pouring medium and how I mix it. Um, if you are one of them lucky people and you happen to have Australian Floetrol, all you need is... From the research I've done, all you need is three or four parts of the Floetrol to one part paint. Does everybody know what I'm saying when I say uh, three parts, four parts? And then question asked, do you have a Facebook or Instagram? I do. In the description as well, there's links to everything. Um, you're going to see something that says connect with me on social media, and it's a link tree link. And that has the links to everything. I have Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, everything. So I'm everywhere. I'm not as active. I'm not super active on any of the platforms really. But I do have them. Yes. All right, let's put this champagne color down again because that worked out really well. I'm going to have to do quite a few sets of these, but... I'm, I'm going to try to keep the variety in this live stream, but in, the, in my mind, I know the, I need to do more of those because this one's gorgeous. These colors go to, together really well. Y'all might be hearing the crickets in the background, and it's because I have the garage door open because it is super hot, y'all. This cell activator is way thinner than the paint. I'll show you after I blow this out, but I'll, I'll show you my... Um, trace of the cell activator. But the cell activator being thinner, it helps it to uh, <clears throat> sink better. I don't know how well you're going to be able to see this. Let me see if I can find a good reflection of it. You're not seeing that. Hold on. Let me get the white one. All right. So... This has a trace of like zero. See how it just immediately disappears? It might be a trace of one. Yeah, cicadas, crickets. Come on, y'all. I got a third grade education level. Oh, I'm just kidding. But yeah, those are cicadas. You're right. <laughs> okay, so now this one's ready to spin. I almost wish I could keep all of this... Uh, stuff going on on the spinner. Oh man, I don't like that. that at all. And I dripped white paint right there, so I guess that's my excuse to do it again, y'all. So, I mean, I, con I consistently make mistakes with this art form, but it's how we learn, right? No, it's not crickets. Those are cicadas, yeah. They're loud, though. They're, they're out there. Having, having a fit. Luckily, we haven't gotten too much rain from the, the hurricane down south, but I'm sure we will. All right, so doxazine purple, and then the champagne color. Skins? Yeah, I wish I could save this, but I keep on pouring over it all. Whenever I pour over a plastic sheeting, I save that. And I turn those skins into, like, jewelry and stuff that way i'm not just throwing it in the trash sometimes the the colors that are in the tray i can peel those out right garrick 
it's insane. Like you could be doing this forever. Like I don't, I couldn't honestly tell you how many tiles I've done and how many blooms I've done. And I still mess it up. But when I do mess it up, I still try to publish that video to show that, that everybody makes mistakes. I still do. For a set of coasters, it's 25 bucks. And that's whether or not it's a custom order for colors or, or not. So on my Shopify, they're, they're 25 bucks for a set of four. They are, um, <clears throat> hold on one second. I think this one's gonna be a bust too. Um, they're 25 bucks for a set of four. Even if you want custom colors, they're 25 bucks. They're coated in a high temperature resistant scratch proof epoxy resin and cook and have cork backs on the back to protect your surfaces. So they're, they're very high quality, they're handmade, but I've never really looked at it like it was something that's gonna make me a millionaire. So if I could just share it with everybody. Hold on, I'm gonna have to this video. I could have swore it said 25. What do y'all think? This, as it is. I use stone coat, uh, not the art resin, but the normal resin. In the very bottom of the description is my email address. And you can get through, or you can get in touch with me that way. That's the most effective way to get in touch with me is through the email just because I, I see that every single day. I do price the canvases by square inches, yes. Yeah, mistakes are, are helpful, and I, I try to show them because, I mean, I, I learn a ton from my mistakes. I learn from other people's mistakes. So I'm assuming that a lot of people learn from others' mistakes too. Some of us got to make our own mistakes though too. So, yeah, I'm ready to be, man. If you have questions, go ahead. What is the pinkish color in that? Uh, are you talking about, are you talking about this? This mica that had the the purple in it. I'm not sure. I have one video using uh, my how I turn my skins into jewelry, and I think that is also in my acrylic pouring guide playlist. Uh, that purple is from this little piggy. I sangria is the name of it. So that's that purple that gives that really cool shine shimmer to it. I'd never be able to paint, talk, and read being so cool. <laughs> there is not much. I mean, I'm struggling over here, B-Man. I'm trying. But this whole, this whole live stream is all about y'all anyway. I just want to be able to help you guys and give you guys value. Susan Steele... I'm gonna do a search as soon as this live stream's over, and I'm gonna find uh, your message because they might be getting lost. And it can I do a six-inch tile? I could. I just don't have any six-inch tiles right now. And typically, I don't do six-inch tiles for coasters. I would do those for the for like if I was doing a hot plate or something, then I could do that. Oh, that hot red? You talking about the mica? Because it's right here. This, are you talking about this one? This really gorgeous red color? Kashia Kral? Is that what you're talking about? <clears throat> Let me put this white cell activator on here before these colors start moving. Okay, Kashia, give me one second. I wanna say that it is the Grenache from this little piggy but I don't want to lie to you. So I will show you actually on camera. I'll grab the container and show you. All right, let me 
that'll settle just fine. Let me grab this red here. Yeah, so that red is just this Grenache from this little piggy. I love this little piggy stuff. The, the paint is protected by that epoxy resin and stone coat is heat resistant up to 400 degrees. So that's why you can use it for coasters or hot plates or anything like that. Because people put their hot coffee mugs on these coasters after I'm done and they, they don't have any issues. Now, if you only spray some kind of uh, aerosol or you brush on some kind of sealer, then yes, it's gonna leave rings. Anything hot or that weighs a lot is gonna leave rings in it. So that's why I use resin. Hey, Marticia C, how are you? All right. Let me knock out one more of these. And then I'll try to bring you guys over. Give you guys maybe like a little behind the scenes. Don't you scrape this one, bro. No, I'm definitely not. <clears throat> and I think like, so like I was talking about my video yesterday, was it yesterday, the red one, where all the mistakes were made? I think a big part of me, you know, being so overly critical on myself was that it was a, an order. Somebody wanted to buy those. So I think I was really hard on myself with those coasters and I felt like they needed to be perfect. But I think in acrylic pouring, there's no such thing as being perfect. Yeah, the humidity, the humidity is terrible in Florida. So what is the issue you're having though? I missed that if you made a statement about it. Oh, correct. The chat just flew and my hands are covered in paint. They do, oh my God, this little piggy's in the chat. There she is. Well, I'm using some of your stuff right now. Oh no, I used black cell activator over this, not white. Oh, you know what? Let's try both, whatever. I got a little starstruck there for a second. <laughs> I'll use white and black. We'll see what that does. Oh, it makes blisters on your canvas? Yeah, that could be from the humidity. The biggest problem I would think with all the humidity would be cracking and crazing though. Okay, so that black with white cell activator is doing some really trippy, wicked stuff. What the heck, brother? That's crazy looking. I might have to do that more often. See, I'm making mistakes and cool things are happening. Happy little accidents. Does someone else know the answer to my question? Jack, 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 fluid art. Shoot, here, I'm gonna take my gloves off so I can try to scroll up and see what that question was. Cause I'm, I missed it. everywhere yeah happy little accidents are awesome I'm looking for your question right now I'm backing through it mm. how long before stone coat is cured like like before you can sell the coasters oh, okay so 30 days the curing time for stone coat the, their recommended curing time is 30 days. I found that they're dry enough to move. Like I can pick them up and move them around after about seven days. But then I'll set them off to the side and allow them to cure for another uh, 20 days. So that way that they're, they're, perf they're fully dried and hardened. So I normally wait about 30 days before I sell them, before I put them up for sale. So I apologize for missing your question, but Yeah, this little piggy went to this cup. This little piggy got scraped. Yeah, absolutely right. Yeah, absolutely, 30 days. And it, it should be dry enough. This came out freaking wicked looking. It's got some crazy white lacing, but black lacing in it too. That's crazy looking. What? I'm here till Sunday, back in the 4th North Myrtle. I usually come two times a month. 
Nice. So Myrtle Beach, is that what you're talking about? I'm gonna have to do one more like that because that one doesn't go with the, the other three. Yeah, that one came out cool, didn't it? Who would have thought that me messing up and, oh, we'll see, I'm about to do it again. I don't have a pillow. Thank you, Enlightened One, I appreciate that. Yes. So, Amy Duckworth, have you, you used to do uh, acrylic pouring and you just took a break, or, or what happened? Well, Art by Kirsten, you should send me an email and maybe we could do like a collaboration sometime because I like going to Myrtle Beach during the summer. So I think that'd be kind of cool. Let me find what colors I was using. Aren't you tired of working in the same technique? Hold on, let me scroll up. The same technique, yeah, but I do do other things a lot of the time. I have been doing balloons recently just because the main thing that I sell at my uh, markets and shows is coasters. A lot of people aren't interested in the canvas work. Yeah, Art by Kirkston, send me an email. I have no objections to doing collaborations with anybody. I would love to do a collaboration with, with whoever. I think it'd be a lot of fun. All right, let me get this white on there. And then I'm going to do you a, give you guys a, like a walk around of my garage slash studio so you can see some of the stuff that's just sitting there drying on my table. Yeah, Amy, you should do some more. If, if it's something you want to do, if it, it makes you feel good, then do it for sure. All right, cool. I'm gonna let this settle for a second. I think I had something chewing on me. It might've been a mosquito. Yeah, people do love coasters, Kim. You're absolutely right. Like I can barely keep up with enough inventory to keep things stocked. All right, I'm gonna spin this bad boy out. And then I'll do the little once around in here. All right, that came out cool. I really love these colors together, y'all. But yeah, like that thing is wicked looking. And the cells are gonna continue to sink down into it. So it'll get more and more defined as time goes by. Like you're gonna see when I bring the camera around. Let me flip the overhead light on so you guys can see better. Cause it's just darkness in here right now. So, I am here, and I'm moving you guys. I'm carrying you guys around with me. All right, so these are all the colors I was going to play with tonight, but I didn't get to them all. And then we will show you... Hold on. Somebody made a comment. Do I paint with brushes or a palette knife? Sometimes I use brushes and palette knife. Yeah, sometimes. Okay, so here's some of the ones we did tonight. We got the hot pink and the teal. We've got that champagne color. Apologies for my table, y'all. It's it's a hot mess in here, but and this is that crazy little white one with the it was white and black cell activator. I think it came out really wicked. All right, so then we'll come over to this table, and these are dry already. Bronze and greens, golds and greens. And a bunch of them just sitting here. I'm just waiting for them to fully cure so I can seal them. They are dry to the touch. You will notice that they dry with some kind of texture to them. So that's normal. And I'm just wandering you guys around my garage right now. All right. This is that most recent Dutch pour, still trying to let it dry completely. It's dried, but for the most part. And then 
a bunch of stuff I haven't even listed on my store yet. Did y'all see that nightmare? I tried to turn the camera fast, but that blue one that I mixed myself without silicone, I think it was uh, about a month ago now, got some really crazy cracking and crazy.